Alright, what's up everybody? My name is Mark Manvex Forever and welcome to the 10th episode of the series Let's Make a PID Loop. Hooray! We made it through so much, we typed so many codes together and I'm so excited to type more, more codes with you. Alright, 10, 10 episodes, that's, that's, that's um, pretty amazing. and. Uh, um, I'm very happy if you can learn something about PID or some intuition about integral or some intuition about just robots in general or it's, it's some idea about programming. Uh, if you can find this series helpful in any way, then I'm very happy and thank you for watching. So today we are going to talk about another issue which is very easy, uh, which is very easily confused with the um, uh, integral active zone, and I don't want you to confuse it. I want you to dis to I want you to distinguish between the two. All right. So uh, first, let's let's think about this way. What do we need the integral for? Well, basically, I've already emphasized that question for like a lot of times. We want the integral to do, uh, well, I mean, slow uh, adjustments or small minor adjustments, precise adjustments to get us precisely to the target when the proportion cannot do so. And by do, by, by me, I mean me by saying precise adjustments. I mean that I don't want the integral to be too big. If the integral is too big, if I end up from going from here to here, accumulated value that exceeded one to seven, then the robot is going to overshoot anyway. Even though we, even though we just set the integral equal to zero, the momentum is going to make the robot overshoot anyway. So we want the integral to always stay below a certain value to make sure that even if something happens and some somehow the integral blows up our integral's value is not too big and it is still it can still be classified as precise movement also another issue that basically falls in the same category is that uh, imagine that your robot goes all the way in autonomous there's somebody just riding some I mean, reckless, uh, I mean your opponent is riding some reckless and uh, irresponsible autonomous routine to mess up your autonomous routine imagine that the robot comes from the other side your robot goes all the way from here to here when the integral is activated suddenly there's this huge robot coming from the other side and blocks you right here what's gonna happen your integral is going to keep accumulating and accumulating all the way until your motor's full power. However, there's a big ro uh, there's a big robot blocking you, and uh, your value goes high, and your motor gets stalled. Your base motor gets stalled, and there's you. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, I know every single thing about PID integral, but dang, I never thought that somebody would block me like that. And I right now I know that my integral is adding up, and uh, my robots space is gonna about to get burned out that is bad we don't want that to happen once uh, I burned my lift in the uh, autonomous because of, bro of a broken potentiometer and man I'm telling you it's not fun just knowing exactly what is stalling the motor I mean why the motor is moving improperly and why the motor is being stalled at full power and just watching the gears click and the, and the motor stall and uh, the, the, I'm, I'm, I mean the motors burn out when you're actually getting the drive control that is a horrible horrible feeling so with those two points stated we need a hard limit on our um, uh, on our uh, PID uh, integral we t we cannot let the integral it's dangerous and there's no point in letting the integral get so big we probably the maximum value I would guess for the integral to get is 45 I mean the I mean the final integral which is this value we don't need this value to get above 45 because if I mean, because 45 is basically like the medium speed to move your robot around and we really don't want this thing to get about uh, I mean about 45 and anything above that is dangerous and it's unnecessary we want precise movement provided by the integral so that let's do this um, I am going to co uh, we are going to get another variable called float integral limit and it equals to something, and we are going to add to something. And still, uh, it's the basically very similar setup as the integral active zone. However, we've got to know that the integral limit is something very, very, very different from integral active zone. And those two algorithms, they have to be processed separately. You can't mix them together. The just a little bit recap: the integral active zone is saying that if my robot 
If the distance of my robot is too far from the target, I don't want the integral to start blowing up and uh, unnecessarily, so the integral active zone is a distance, while the integral limit is a power limit. It's saying that it's basically saying that even though when I'm in this zone, if something happens or basically if my constant is too big or something, I don't want my integral to go too big and then I just basically overshoot anyway. Remember, integral limit, I just actually call it power limit. That makes more sense. So the integral active zone is saying that where I want the integral to activate. Well, the integral power limit is saying that what's the maximum value or what's the maximum power the integral can contribute to the motor so that I don't make the value unnecessarily big or I don't make the uh, motors unnecessarily stall because of because I have integral because integral is meant for precise adjustment all right so integral power limit and uh, how are we going uh, let's 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 do this first we're going to set up the value just a bit later and um, we're going to know that it's somewhere around 45 however we need to change that the the, the way we put it in so we just want to know that it's somewhere around 45 we don't want the value of the uh, um, we, we just basically don't want the value of uh, the integral to get anywhere above, above 45 or actually I'm, I'm gonna make it 50. we just don't want the value of the integral to get anywhere above 50 so that it's only meant for precise adjustment so how would you, how would we do this we would say that um, if the uh, after processing the after the first hours of processing we will say that if integral raw if this thing is bigger than my limit if this thing is too big what shall we do basically we just harshly and brutally we just set it equal to power limit that's the maximum power on the go if you exceed it I'm gonna make you precisely that power so integral raw equals to integral power limit however remember this is only the positive side of things and uh, what if your robot goes to that side and your robot wants to get back and somehow it's stalled so we need to take care of the negative side of things too so what if the uh, integral raw is negative? So when the integral raw is smaller than the negative integral power limit, when it's actually so too small, we're going to say that the integral raw is equal to negative integral power limit. So that's the way you set it up. However, what should this integral power limit be? Remember, right, in this case, we are dealing with the integral raw. So the finally, however, finally, we are adding up this integral we, we are adding up the scaled down integral variable into the final power so we really what we want to change is the integral so basically l let me do this in this case uh, if it's too big essentially we want this thing to be ki times 45 actually 50 if we want this thing to be 50 and we somehow set we, I mean we need to multiply this with this integral power limit because essentially if it's too big it says it the integral raw is the integral power limit so we need to somehow multiply something which is going to be the integral power limit to make the integral proper all right so we want the integral to be 50 so what should we multiply with ki to make the integral 50 which is basically simple math you multiply ki multiply 50 divided by ki KI. In this case, basically your KIs cancel out and uh, your integral is just basically 50 over KI. So, which implies if the integral raw too big, we want to set the integral raw to the integral power limit, and the integral power limit in this case should be 50 over KI or whatever value desired over KI because we want to cancel out that KI. And just remember, all the algorithm behind this, uh, this is that we are limiting the integral raw. However, we want the integral, the, the integral to behave uh, certainly. So we need to divide out the constant we just multiplied. So let's do this. 50 over k. Copy. This is gonna be 50 over k. However, right now you need to be very careful. For k i, uh, in this case, uh, you you just basically can't 
easily set this ki to equal to zero because if you divide something by zero the robot c or any compiler is going to give you an error it's not just zero and uh, i believe actually i think i tried to set i tried to divide something by zero in robot c in the earlier version and robot c actually just made it zero actually <laughs> the robot c just made it zero <laughs> and uh, I, I i'm still not sure i gotta ask mr pierman to confirm that but Definitely in the newer version of Robot C, when I divide something by zero, it gives me an error. So that if in this case you, you want to disable KI, you can just basically type 0 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. You type a very, very small value. And it's going to be equivalent to zero, but you just don't divide this, direct, this thing directly by zero. Alrighty. So um, we need to change this thing back to integral raw. And today, what, let's just a little bit recap. Today, we finished the third algorithm we need to place on the integral to make it fully functional. And in this case, right now, I'm proud to tell you that your controller, your PI controller is fully functional. So, uh, excuse me, uh, my parents were calling. <laughs> All right, so um, we just uh, finished our final control on integral, just a little bit recap. Um, it is the power limit on the integral and it's very different from the active zone. It is uh, today what we did is a hard power limit on the integral saying that we just don't let the integral get too big and mess things up. And uh, our previously what we said is that we only activate it when we're supposed to be activated. And today we're talking about don't let it get too big, which is controlling it. Both of them are very um, uh, effective control methods and both of them are required. Uh, in uh, PID integral control and um, also we have this little thing that sets the integral to zero when our uh, error is zero. So there we go. Right now you have, like what I just said, you have a fully functional uh, PI uh, controller. We still haven't added the uh, derivative part, but um, uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, basically right now, this uh, controller, if you tune these two constants correctly, and in the future I might do a few tuning videos, um, if you tune these constants correctly, you can get fairly precise, and this is going to be the autonomous killer in most of the tournaments, because you need that precise movement. Alrighty, so um, this is Marmov X Driver, and uh, thank you for watching, I will see you in the next video.